What's going on y'all? Hey, we're back. Got something a little different for y'all today. Uh, it's a nasty rainy cold day here day after Christmas. So uh, this is a day I usually take and uh, I'll stay off the water and this is what I call a maintenance day. I'll, uh, I'll get out here and work on my boat. Uh, today I'm gonna change the oil in my motor, check the fluid in the lower unit, check my tires, uh, grease my hubs, check out all my bolts and stuff. So uh, gonna show you guys how I do all that. So uh, stay tuned. All right, so the first thing I always do is I'll just go ahead and change the oil on my motor. It's it's really simple and easy to do. It only takes about 15, 20 minutes at the most. I, the only reason it takes that long is because I let my let my motor drain completely, get all that oil out of there, so you don't have any any residual oil left over. So I give it a few extra minutes to soak. But all you all you need to do it is just a you just need a five eighths five eighths wrench, a tube, and a, and an oil pan. Simple. So what so what I like to do is uh, I like to get in here with my get in here with my wrench. Kind of I'll get it cracked loose like that. Once you get it cracked loose, you can you can pretty much do it with your hand. And obviously you want to get this get that hose on there like that. Drips into your oil pan. easy now I'll just sit here and let it drain for a while all right y'all we've, we've got this oil drain now so what you want to do is you just want to go ahead and pop you pop your hose off take your wrench tighten this back up now you want to take a take a rag or a cloth or something here and just wipe off all this all this excess oil that's that's left over cool deal now we're just going to go ahead and uh, pop the cowling off uh, replace the oil filter and fill this thing back up with oil all right y'all we got the oil filter or we got the cowling uh popped off here so what we're going to do is we're going to replace the oil filter right here um, one thing you want to do before you uh, pull that oil filter off is you see this yellow yellow cap here this is a drain uh, there's a little reservoir up here because you know any oil that's left in your filter will spill out whenever you unscrew this thing so there's a little uh, little drain right here what I'll do is, is I'll set this little yellow cap aside go ahead and grab my my hose again pop that girl on there and I have my oil pan sitting down here so it can drain off so I'll just go ahead and uh, get this guy started off here and once you get it loose obviously you can use your hand the rest of the way Didn't spill much any wasn't wasn't any oil left so I'm gonna go ahead and grab a new filter and pop it on there real quick now that I've got that filter off I just went ahead and took a rag and kind of cleaned that off right there with a little bit of the old the old oil that was left around that seal so I just went ahead and clean that off real quick so just come over here got my new filter uh, I'm gonna take my finger and just give it a dip down here in this oil and then just want to give her a just want to lube her up here Once you do that, just uh, come over here, take your filter. There we go. Boy, I was having trouble. This is about impossible to do with one hand. Just go 
Go ahead and snug that guy up. I'm good to go. Pop this guy off there. Put your plug back on and you're ready to go. Alright, now that we've got this oil filter replaced, we're going to go ahead and fill this thing back up with oil. It, it takes seven quarts. Uh, yeah, obviously you need a filter. Make this way, way, way easier. Otherwise, you're just going to have a mess. So, uh, we're going to go ahead and fill this guy back up and uh, be finished. This is, the, this is the oil I use, just a four-stroke synthetic blend, 10W30. I use 10W30 in the wintertime and the colder months, uh, and I use the 25W40 in the summertime when it's warmer. Uh, that's just what's recommended by Mercury, so that's what I do. All right, y'all, we got, got this thing filled back up with oil. I don't I always put in just a little short of seven cores just with any residual oil that's left over in here. Uh, I don't want to get it too full of oil. Uh, it's always good to, you can always have a little less and have to fill it up rather than having more and having to, to drain some. So that's what I do. So now we're just go ahead and check it. All right, y'all, we did it just right. It's uh, filled up just well this last yellow ball here. So it's just about perfect. So we're gonna stick this back in here and put the cowling back on and we are done. All right, y'all. Got the oil change in the in the motor. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here and check out all my uh, check out all my tires. I'm going to check tire pressure. I'm going to do a quick uh, run through just to check the tread and see if make sure I got no nails or anything in the tire. And then I'm going to pop these uh, hub caps off, f uh, fill the hubs up with grease, and put it back on. I'll be good to go. Hopefully, I won't have to put no air in any tires or anything. But uh, we're just going to go ahead and give it a check here and, uh, and take a look. So first thing I always do, I just come in here and. Tire pressure gauge check it. This one's right at 45. So this one's good to go um, I like to keep mine at right around 45 pounds uh, Sometimes a little more Any, anything between 45 and 50 is fine. It's usually where I try to uh, Try to keep them That one's right at 45 that one's good to go Pop these guys back on here uh, I'll just do a quick run through check out all the check out the tread and everything these look these look good to go um, so we'll just walk over here to this side and do the same thing that one's a little low probably put a little air in that one see that guy on up there Check this one. That one's good to go. Give this one one more check. This one's fine, it's right at 45, so these are all good to go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop these uh pop these hub cap caps off here and uh, take these take these off and fill them up with grease and be be done I've got my grease gun a pair of channel locks here and uh, paper towel frame excess grease uh, I always come down here and I check my hub caps to see how tight they are I already pre loosened these ones these ones were I need a pair of channel locks for these um, I'll go ahead and pop these off Especially on these nitros, you have to watch these hubcaps. They're plastic and they will crack, so you have to uh, keep an eye on them. I've I replace them all the time. I've gone through a whole set this just this year, so you do have to keep an eye on it. But I'll go ahead and check check both of these while I'm while I'm over here and like this one. These guys look fine, so we're, we're just going to go ahead and grab the grease gun here and. Uh, get to work. Let's see here, where is that sort of thing? That's what I need up. I need a paper towel right there.
Let's go ahead and pump this guy up. And you should see it start to come out right here on the edges. So once you see that, you can go ahead and pop that guy off the zerk fitting. Go ahead and screw your hubcap back on and you are good to go. Yep, I'm just going to repeat that process for for all four and that should do it. So we uh, we went ahead and got all, all four hubs greased up, popped the caps back on, and uh, that'll, that'll about do it. I've got to order some lower unit fluid. I thought I had some, so we're going to wait, wait on doing that. Uh, went ahead and checked all the uh, my jack plate bolts, went ahead and snugged all those up. They were tight, didn't even need to do it. I do this about once a month. I just go through everything and and uh, check up on it. So, yeah, that's just something I do. I try to do once a month, especially on days like today where it's nasty and cold and raining. Uh, this gives me a good excuse to go ahead and do it and get it out of the way. So, hope you guys learned something. Uh, thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.